تجربے خدا میں رزوی ہو صدیق ہے جان صداقت کی فاروق ہے شان عدالت کی صدیق ہے جان صداقت کی فاروق ہے شان عدالت کی عثمان ہے کان مروت کی حیدر کی ولایت کیا کہنا دو پھول بطولی گلشن کے ایک سبز ہوئے ایک سرخ ہوئے دو پھول دو پھول بطولی گلشن کے ایک سبز ہوئے ایک سبز ہوئے ایک سرخ ہوئے بغداد و عرب جن سے محکے ان پھولوں کے نکھت کیا کہنا دو پھول بطولی گلشن کے ایک سبز ہوئے ایک سرخ ہوئے بغداد و عرب جن سے محکے ان پھولوں کے نکھت کیا کہنا کیا بات رضا اس چمنستان کرم کی کیا بات رضا اس چمنستان کرم کی زہرہ ہے کلی جس میں حسین اور حسن پھول کیا بات رضا اس چمنستان کرم کی زہرہ ہے کلی جس میں حسین اور حسن پھول الحمدللہ لاس نائٹ آئی ڈسکسٹ وٹ ہیپن ان دا منت اف رجب سکسٹی ہجری اینڈ آئی فردر ایکسپلین ہاؤ دا اٹیک آف دا وکٹ یزید کمینسڈ اینڈ دیر آفٹر آئی ڈسکسٹ دا مارٹم آف سیدنا امام حسن رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ ہاؤ ہی واز پوائزن بائی وے آف لیتھل پوائزن I also explain the last words of advice which Sayyidina Imam Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu gave to Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu before he journeyed from this world. And I would like to continue today's discussion with those words by repeating those words of Sayyidina Imam Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu which I, quote, which I quoted last night. So as Imam Hassan was about to pass from the world, I said to you last night that as Sayyiduna Imam Hassan radiallahu ta'ala an was about to pass from the world, he said, Hussain, always be cautious of the foolish people of Kufa. Hadrat Imam Hassan radiallahu ta'ala an who, before he left this dunya, after he was given poison, he said to Sayyiduna Imam Hussain radiallahu an and Imam Hussain radiallahu an went to him, He said to him, Hussain, always be cautious of the foolish people of Kufa. Let it not be so that they will talk to you and in a sweet manner, they will sweet talk you and invite you there and then leave you in the most testing moment. You will then regret and the time to save yourself will elapse. After quoting these words and regarding this advice I said to you last night, that Ustaz Zaman Allama Hassan radiallahu ta'ala an said that indeed this advice of Imam Hassan radiallahu an was worthy of being weighed in pearls and deserving of being engraved on the heart. And after saying this he says but who could have stopped that which was already destined to happen. Subhanallah listen to these words of Ustaz Zaman Allama Hassan Barilvi radiallahu an After saying what Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan advised, he says, but who could have stopped that which was already destined to happen, which destiny had made well known a long time before. Which destiny had made well known a long time before. Subhanallah. Now these words of Ustaz Adaman Allama Hassan, especially this last line where he says, But who could have stopped that which was already destined to happen, which destiny had made well known a long time before, is in fact the gist of the entire battle of Karbala and the gist of the events which led to the battle of Karbala. In other words, this was indeed destined, it was destined that Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala an will reach Karbala. It was destined that he will be called to Kufa. It was destined that Imam Hussain radiallahu will give his shahadat. It was destined that Hadrat Ali Akbar will be made shaheed there. It was destined that Hadrat Ali Asghar will be made shaheed there. In other words, this was indeed destined and it is something which was well known. It was something which was well known and this was not only well known, remember this, This was not only well known from the blessed era of the beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is not something which was only known in the zaman of the beloved Rasul 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but this was well known for hundreds of years before. When was it well known? Always keep this in mind, that the shahadat of Imam Hussain radiallahu an taking place was this time, it is the will of Allah. But it was so well known, this destiny was so well known, that it was not only known in the zaman of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was indeed known there, but it was not only known there, it was known hundreds of years before the shahadat of Sayyiduna Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu. It is reported in the narrations that 300 years, not in the zaman of Rasul Pak not one year, not two years, not five years, not ten years, not fifty years, not a hundred years. It is reported that 300 years before the arrival of Huzur Sarwari Alam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was a couplet written on a rock. It is reported that 300 years before the Mawlud of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 300 years before the Mubarak arrival of Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this physical apparent world, there was a couplet, there was a shir, there was a poetic couplet stanza written on a rock. And do you know what was written on that rock? Atarju ummatun qatalat Husayna. Atarju ummatun qatalat Husayna. Shafa'at jaddihi yawm al hisab. Allahu Akbar. 300 years before. 300 years before. It is written on a rock. 300 years before. And I'm repeating this. Because I want this to be embedded in our hearts and for us to understand this maqam and this fadilat that is given to Imam Hussain radiallahu an, and the maqam and the fadilat of this shahadat of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala an, that 300 years before the arrival of Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the apparent physical world, a couplet was written on a rock which was discovered much later. But this was written more than 300 years before the scholars have said. And what was written on the rock? Ataraju ummatun qatalat Husayna shafa'ata jaddihi yawm al-hisab. What does it mean? The gist of the meaning. Ataraju ummatun qatalat Husayna shafa'ata jaddihi yawm al-hisab. Is that nation? Is that nation who killed, in other words, martyred Hussein? still expecting to attain his grandfather's intercession on the day of Qiyamah, on the day of reckoning, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. 300 years before the birth of the physical birth of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is written on a rock that is that nation who killed, who slayed, who martyred Hussein radiallahu and still expecting to attain his grandfather's intercession on the day of reckoning. It is mentioned that this same poetic couplet was found written in a monastery in Rome. This couplet was found written in a monastery in Rome. Where was it found written? In a monastery in Rome. And the one who wrote it could not be traced. Some scholars have said that it was written by the nation of the past. Some were saying it was written by the jinns. Whoever wrote it. But this couplet was written 300 years before. 300 years before. And it was written in this couplet. Ataruju ummatun qatalat Husayna. Shafa'at jaddihi yawm al hisab. Is that nation who murtered, martyred Hussein, who killed Hussein, who made Hussein Shaheed, still expecting to attain his beloved grandfather sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's intercession on the day of reckoning? This couplet was found in a monastery. It was found in a monastery. Now at this point, let me say that 300 years before the shahadat of Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala an, 
that this rock is found in a monastery, that this is found engraved on a rock, on a rock, written on a rock in a monastery in Rome. And what is found there again? Is that nation who killed and martyred Hussein radiallahu anhu and still expecting to attain his grandfather sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's intercession on the day of reckoning. What does this tell us? It just sounds like a normal poetic couplet. Firstly, the point is that it was written 300 years before the arrival of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this dunya. But what does this couplet, 300 year old couplet at that time, at that time, 300 years before the arrival of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is that 300 year old couplet telling us? What is the message in this 300 year old couplet? Let us try to analyze what is being said in this couplet which, has, which was already written 300 years before on a rock in a monastery about the Shahadat of Imam Hussain Rasulullah. I was looking at this couplet today and I tried to understand by the grace of Allah and the mercy of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Karam of our Mashaykh, especially Sarkar Taj Sharia Radiallahu Ta'ala Mashaykh Kamil, I was trying to understand what is the message in this. If you look at this couplet on face value, it seems that the most important thing about this couplet is that it was written 300 years before on a rock in a monastery about the shahadat of Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala an. and hence I thought let me try to understand this a bit further and let me try and analyze this with my humble knowledge and not even with my knowledge but with the karam of my mashayikh especially Sarkari Ghosa Khaja Raza Hamidu Mustafa Taj Sharia Muhaddi Kabir Qaid Millat all my mashayikh Fuzo Barakat let me try and understand this okay and I have understood with my humble understanding these few important points. I'm going to I'm going to present to you ten points here tonight. Ten points that I have understood from this one couplet that was written three hundred years before the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to this dunya physically apparent in the apparent dunya. Now we are talking about the shahadat of Imam Hussein, and I went from the words of Ustaz Zaman Maulana Hassan radiallahu anhu. When he said that who could have stopped that which was already destined to happen, which destiny had made well known a long time before, and this is my discussion for today, for today, that destiny had made this known a well a long time before. What that the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam's beloved grandson would be made shaheed. And when we talk about this in history, we go back to the zaman of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and look at the riwayats that took place there. And from that we understand that it was already well known while Imam Hussein radiallahu anhu was a child. And I'm going to go there a little later today, inshallah, if I'm within the time frame. That when the beloved Rasul in the zaman of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, while Hasnain Karimain radiallahu anhu were still children, it was well known that. Imam Hussain radiallahu an will be made shaheed. Okay? So when we say that this was well known, generally we talk about it being well known because it was known while Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala an was a child. But now we are seeing that the scholars have said that there was this couplet that was written, there was this couplet that was written on a rock in a monastery in Rome. And it was written in other words, is that nation who martyred Hussein still expecting to attain his grandfather's intercession on the day of reckoning? Are they still expecting? Is that nation who martyred Hussein still expecting to attain his grandfather's intercession on the day of reckoning? Yeah, they still expecting. So this is what I was trying to understand. That what is in this in, in this couplet? Indeed. There is a lot of information in it and I'm going to share with you some of the information that is in, the, in this couplet that I've understood with my humble knowledge and I'm sure many of the scholars have understood it as well. I'm just understanding it through the dust of the feet of the Mashaykh Ikra. So, firstly, I'm going to make ten points here. The first thing, 
This poetic stanza that was written, this couplet which was written, written 300 years before the arrival of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and more than 300 years before the birth of Imam Hussein radiallahu anhu. First thing, I want you to make points. First thing, it tells us that the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, the shahadat of Imam Hussein radiallahu anhu, was known by the nations of the past even long before the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and even long before the martyrdom of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu and it also proves and it also proves that which is our Akidah and it also proves that which is our Akidah what is our Akidah? that the past nations knew that the past nations knew the past nations knew very well about the arrival of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam means 300 years before the coming of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were discussing this because they knew that the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is going to come because every Nabi who came in every zamana announced the arrival of the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Every Nabi spoke about the coming of the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, fidaka abi wa ummi. So we understand, number one, first point, this couplet is telling us that was written 300 years before the coming of the beloved Rasul sallallahu it is telling us that the martyrdom of Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu was known by the nations of the past even long before the birth of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa 300 years before and even long before the martyrdom of Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu and it proves that, which is our Akidah that the past nations spoke about the Mawlud about the birth about the coming of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa because if they were not speaking about the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa why would they be speaking about the martyrdom of his grandson Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu point number one point number two it tells us the share tells us that the past nations remember the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Again, I'm repeating: the past nations, number two, they remember the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they were aware. They were speaking about his arrival on this dunya. In other words, they were speaking about the Mawlud of the beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. They were remembering the beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. So point number one in this, I'm splitting this up, up, up. Point number one in this is that the past nations, some, some say that this, this share was written by the people of the past. Some say it was written by the jinns. Either way, they knew long before the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and long before the martyrdom of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala an that they knew that Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu remained shaheed they knew long before this is how well known the shahadat of Imam Hussain is 300 years before they knew point number one that he will be made shaheed and they knew this well before Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came in this dunya okay number one Okay, and secondly, I'm saying the second point here is that this share is also telling us, this couplet is also telling us that the past nations remembered the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and were well aware of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they were speaking about his arrival on earth, which is proven from the Torah, it is proven from the Injil, it is proven from the Tabur, it is proven from the past books that the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam's arrival is written, it is the word of Allah. And every Nabi passed it down. And so the nations knew. And even if it was the humans. And even if they were the jinns. They knew that the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa was coming. And this share is also telling us of the arrival of the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Thirdly. The third point that we understand from this couplet. It tells us that 300 years before. It was known by the past nations or the jinns. That the grandson of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa will be made shaheed by those who are part of the nation, those who are the ummah. Those who claim to be the ummah, they knew even this much. They knew this much. They knew that 300 years before it was known by the past nations of the jinns. It was known that 300 years before it was known that the grandson of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa was made shaheed. Not only made shaheed, they knew who will make him shaheed. They knew who will make him shaheed as well. This is the third point from the share. The fourth point, okay, and I'm going to repeat the share so you understand. I'm doing the translation. Is, is that nation who killed, who martyred Hussein Radiallahu still expecting to attain his grandfather's intercession on the day of reckoning? 
So it tells us these three points already from there, right? Number one, it's telling us that the past nations remember the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and were well aware of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they should be speaking about his arrival. This was the second point that I made. The, the, the first point that I made is that they were aware of the Shahadat of Imam Hussein before it even happened, 300 years before. Two points, very simple to understand. Anybody would understand this. Third point, it also is tells us that we understand it from it that 300 years before the coming of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the, jin, the, 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 the past nations knew that he will be, Imam Hussein will be made shaheed, that too by the Ummah. By the Ummah, they knew this here. Okay? Fourthly, the fourth thing that we understand from this, that this here is telling us that 300 years before it was known to them that the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will have a grandson. Allah Akbar. For those who say that, why do you talk about the seerat and the life of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You're making Maulu Sharif and you're giving lengthy discussions about the life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mind you, this was known thousands of years before, hundreds of years before. That is why these people 300 years before who wrote this couplet, it was known to them that the beloved Nabi will come. And it was known to them that the beloved Nabi will have a grandson. In other words, they were speaking about the Ahlul Bayt. They were speaking about the Ahlul Bayt 300 years before. They were speaking about the noble household of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had they been not speaking about the household how did they knew about the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam this knowledge they knew that this was going to happen so the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the mawlud of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was being explained and discussed 300 years before much before that but i'm giving you the example of 300 years because of this couplet which was written, found that was written 300 years before they knew this is the fourth point here is that 300 years before by looking at that share, by that couplet, we are understanding that 300 years before it was known to them that the beloved Nabi will have a grandson and they even knew, they knew this already 300 years before and they even knew 300 years before, subhanallah, subhanallah, they even knew 300 years before that that grandson's name will be Hussein, subhanallah. Subhanallah. They even knew 300 years before that that grandson's name will be Hussein because the share is written. Okay, it is written that is that nation who martyred Hussein still expecting to attain his grandfather's intercession on the day of reckoning. So the fourth point that they knew already that the Nabi will have a grandson and they knew already that there will be one who's, and his name will be Hussein. Fourth point. Fifth point for those who object to us remembering the Shahada Ikram and honoring Sayyiduna Imam Hussein radiallahu an and about speaking about the Shahadat from proper narrations and authentic references. The Shahadat of, Hus of my Hussein and your Hussein to those who object to us making this majlis and doing zikr Hussein, for those who object to us remembering the shodai kiram and honoring Sayyidina Imam Hussein and speaking about his shahadat, this is the fifth point from this couplet which was written 300 years ago, that those who object to us speaking about the shahadat from proper narrations and authentic references, the shahadat of our Hussein, your Hussein and my Hussein Allah, is such a shahadat and such an honorable shahadat that leave alone it being announced and remembered now this zikr shahadat was happening more than 300 years before it was it was happening more than 300 years before even imam hussein radiallahu arrived in the world and before he was made shaheed so those who try to stop the zikr shahadat now should know then when it could not be stopped more than 300 years before it happened then how will it be stopped now this is my fifth point that those who could who, who stop try to stop it today let them know that it cannot be stopped because it is that which happened 300 years before and when it could not be stopped then how can you stop it now and another thing this is a share when we read in in this point in the fifth point i'm going to make this that when we read kalam in the praise of imam hussein proper correct kalam not reading incorrect kalams and reading false information in the kalam, kalams this is incorrect like the, the Ravzis and etc do this here we must read the Sunnah, read the proper ash'ar they read from proper riwayats okay so when we do this and read the proper ash'ar in the shan of imam hussein then these bad mazhabs object to it why are you reading about imam hussein it's not allowed it's not permissible it's bidat it's bidat it's bidat let us tell that 300 years before this which was written is a share 
This which was written is on my point, on my fifth point. This which is written is a Sher. It's a poetic stanza. So 300 years before, Sher was written about Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala. An. So why should we now not say Sher about the Shahadat of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala? An. My fifth point. Now sixth point. Very simple to understand. I'm going to simplify this to the best of my ability. What I have understood. The words being used here is Qatalat in the Arabic language. Okay, the word that is being used here, Ataraju Ummatun Qatalat Hussein. Okay, the word which is being used here is Qatalat, which is in the past tense. Qatalat is in the past tense. In other words, a nation who killed, brief for you to understand, for the general public to understand. Qatalat is in the past tense. It is being used here, in other words, a nation who killed. The word which is being used here, they're saying Ataraju Ummatun Qatalat. Okay? okay, it is the word that is being used here is in the past tense. In other words, a nation who killed. Here, he is not even born yet. Leave alone him being born. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, although the first creation and not had not as yet arrived in the garb of the leader of mankind as yet in the dunya. And 300 years before it is being mentioned in the past tense. The shahadat of Imam Hussein is being mentioned in the past tense. Qatalat. This is showing that the past nations knew that this will be discovered after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein. This share will be discovered after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein. So the people of the past did not say, the people of the past did not say who will kill the grandson of the Nabi. But they are saying in the past tense, who killed the grandson of the Nabi, Qatalat. For they even were aware this much that our text which we are writing now and these words will only be discovered after they martyr Imam Hussein radiallahu anh. And thus the words in the past tense and also to remind those in the future that these people who committed this atrocity are already doomed and it is known by the people of the past. And that is why we understand there and by looking at that te Arabic text that is showing us that it was written in the past tense, those who have killed, but yet it is written then. It has not even happened as yet. But why it is being written? Because they knew that this would be found in a time after the Shahada of Imam Hussein and hence they put the word there in the past tense from my understanding. The sixth point has been done. The seventh point in this whole discussion from this one share I'm explaining point. Six points I explained. The seventh point they knew and they believed if you look at the share they knew and they believed. What did the share what does the share say? The share tells you the second part of the share Shafa'at Jaddihi Yom al Hisab. Okay? To attain his, his grandfather's intercession on the day of reckoning. So the seventh point here, they knew and they believed that there will be a day of reckoning. They understood that there will be day of reckoning. They knew that there will be day when a day when all would stand in the court of Almighty Allah, Allah and answer for their deeds and that day is known as Yawmul Hisab. That day is known as known as known as the Yom al Hisab. So that's why they said that Shafa Atajaddihi Yom al Hisab Yom on, on the day of Qiyamah. In other words, on the day of reckoning. So the seventh point is here that that nation, the past people, knew that there will be a day of reckoning. They believed in the day of reckoning. In other words, they knew then that there will be a day when we all would stand in the court of Almighty Allah and answer for their deeds. And that day is known as Yom al Hisab. The seventh point in this one. The eighth point that I would like to make in this, the eighth point that I would make in this, from, I've, from what else I've understood from this, even the past nations knew before the coming of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the eighth point, even the past nations knew before the coming of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may say subhanallah with me one time, and not because of praising what I'm going to say, but to praise and glorify Almighty Allah, and plant yourself a tree in Jannah, say subhanallah, the eighth point, even even the past nations knew before the coming of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the beloved Rasul is Shafi'i Rawza Jaza. They knew that the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the intercessor on the day of reckoning. 
He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will intercede on the day of reckoning. That is why they said, is that nation who martyred Hussein still expecting to attain his grandfather's intercession on the day of reckoning? So the point, the eighth point that I'm making here is that even the past nations knew before the coming of Nabi Kareem sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam that the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Shafi'i Rawzai Jazah. And they knew that he will intercede on the day of Qiyamah, he will make Shafa'at. And they knew that those who opposed the Ahl Bayt and harmed the Ahl Bayt will be deprived of this Shafa'at. And they knew that without the intercession of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no one will be able to attain salvation. Subhanallah, 300 years before, that which is the Aqidah and the Iman of the Sunni, Barelvi, Khush Aqidah Muslims is being publicized and is being announced that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Shafa'at this is why it is our Akida that until the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not open the doors of intercession until Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not open the doors of shafa'a none will be open shafa'at none will be able to intercede and it is our Akida that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will intercede for us all on the day of reckoning and it is our Akida that those who go against the beloveds of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with malice will be deprived of his shafa'at our Akida is that which was mentioned more than 300 years when there was no Barelvi, when the Bareli, when there was no Ajmer Sharif, when there was no Bareli Sharif, when there was no Baghdad Sharif. But Alhamdulillah, this is the Akida of Imam Ahl Sunnah and the Ahl Sunnah that Pesha Haq Mujda Shafa'at Ka Sunate Jayenge, Ha Parote Jayenge, Hamko Hasate Jayenge, Abai Shafa'at. Kisaat abai, abai shafaat, kisaat abai, zara chain le mere, kabrane vale, shahre yare iram, tajadare haram, shahre yare iram, tajadare haram, no bahare shafaat, pelako salam, shafae, rose jaza, tumpe karo road road, shafae, rose jaza, tumpe karo road road, dafae, jumla bala, tumpe karo road road, peshe hak, mujda shafaat, kasunate jayenge, aparote jayenge, hamko hasa. From Allah's court, glad tidings of intercession, he will be announcing. While for us, he will be weeping. Through him, we will be smiling. Soon the moment will come. Abai shafa'at, kisa'at abai, zara chayna le, mere ghabrahane wale. Soon the moment will come, the grand moment of intercession. Compose yourself for a while, O my apprehensive nation. Shahre yare iram, tajdare haram, no bahare shafa'at. Pela ko salam, the emperor of paradise, the reigning king of the sacred stations, the emperor of paradise. The reigning king of the sacred stations upon the flesh upon the fresh blossom of intercession, millions of salutations. Shafai Rose Jaza, Tumpe Karuron Durud, Jada Fai Jumla Bala, Tumpe Karuro Durud, the intercessor of the day of remuneration, billions of salutations upon you, the eradicator of every calamity and misfortune, millions of billions of salutations upon you. So the Akida of the Ahl Sunnat was known by those who wrote those, those words 300 years before, and the Zikre Hussein was being made long before even the arrival of Imam Hussein such is the shan and such is the maqam of Hussein radiallahu an and such is the shan of the shahadat and that, and that martyrdom which Imam Hussein radiallahu an gave more than 1383 years ago so that is the eighth point subhanallah that I've understood from this year which was written 300 years before about the come about the martyrdom of Imam Hussein ninthly it is being said are they expecting ataraju Okay, it is being said, are they expecting? Look at the beauty of this Arabic couplet that is written. Atarju, it is being written first, the words in past tense. Then it is being written about the past. The, 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 it is first it is first being written about the future the, in future tense. Are they expecting? Those who kill the expecting are telling about the, the about those who killed the expectation is being discussed. This is the beauty of how it has been written, but that is another discussion by itself. So the point that ninth point that I want to make here is that subhanallah, it is being said, are they expecting are they expecting in other words even after doing what they did even after doing what they did the past are telling us the people of the past are telling us the nation of the past are telling us those that those who wrote that couple of 300 years are telling us it is being said that they are are they expecting a question is being asked in other words it is with shock when you say something like that it is with shock which you you're being disgusted and saying after what you did are you still expecting this 
In other words, after martyrdom of the grandson of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are you still expecting his intercession? So it is being said, are they expecting? By this word being used, are they expecting? In other words, even after doing what they, what they did, it means they regarded they were doing the right thing. It means that these Husseinis in the, in, in the thick skulls, uh, this Mahathir this Yazidis in the thick skulls thought that the Husseinis were wrong. These Yazidis in the thick skulls thought that the Yazidis were the, 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 the Yazidis in the thick skulls thought that the Husseinis were wrong. Okay, sorry, my tongue tied there for a moment. Did the, uh, the, the Yazidis in that time, the Yazidis in that time, in the thick, thick skulls, thought that the Husseinis were wrong? They thought Imam Hussein was wrong. They regarded what they, they, they thought he was completely out of order and they regarded themselves as being right. In other words, the Yazidis and Yazid and his followers and Ibn Ziyad. And, uh, uh, and Ibn Sa'd and all of them that were there, they regarded they were right. And they were still expecting that all this which they did is nothing wrong. They will still attain intercession and they will be pardoned on the day of Qiyamah. That is why the ninth point here is it is being said, are they expecting? In other words, even after doing what they did, they regarded that they were doing the right thing and still expecting the intercession from the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This is the ninth point that we managed to put from here. The tenth point, the tenth point, they are being reminded that they will not be given what they expect. The tenth point that is being made here is that they will not be given that which they expect because they have killed wrongfully the beloved grandson of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam and their expectation is in vain. These are the ten points that I've tried to understand and derive by analyzing this comes this couplet that was written three hundred years before about the shahadat of Sayyidina Imam Hussain. Three hundred years before when? Before the arrival of the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Now on this same discussion very quickly it there are numerous hadith reported about this in the, and, and, and it has been narrated in numerous hadith in Mubarakah that Huzur sallallahu alayhi was present at the home of Ummul Mu'mini Hadrat Sayyidina Sayyidatina Umm Salma radiallahu, Salma radiallahu anha when an angel who had never descended before sought Almighty Allah's permission and presented himself in the Mubarak court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This now, we spoke about the 300 year share before, now we're talking about the Zawana and the court of the beloved Rasul, the most exalted court of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. that an angel who had never descended before sought Almighty Allah's permission and presented himself in the holy court of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to Ummul Mu'mineen, Sayyidatuna Umm Salma radiallahu an, keep guard at the door so that none should enter. Nobody should enter because this was a private discussion. discussion. Just then, Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala opened the door and presented himself in the court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam as a little child. And he ascended the Mubarak lap of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He climbed onto the lap of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam started showing immense love and affection towards him. So the angel, the angel said to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you love him dearly. He exclaimed, Ya Rasulullah sallam, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you love him dearly. In other words, you love Hussain dearly. So the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yes. The angel said, the time will come soon when the ummah of Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, your ummah will martyr him. They will make him shaheed. And if Huzur so wishes, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then I can show you, O oh, beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that land where he will be martyred. It is reported that that angel then brought some red soil. And in one narration, it is reported that he brought some dust, some sand. While another narration says that he brought some pebbles, some stones. And the beloved Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam smelt it. And after he smelt that sand which was brought by the angel, he said, Rehun karbin wa bala. Rehun karbin wa bala. The smell of anxiety and calamity is emanating from it. Can you understand what was happening at that moment? When the angel was telling the beloved Rasul Sallallahu the beloved Nabi knows this, but it was said so that today we reach this information, we get this information. It was being said to the beloved Nabi to the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that this Mubarak grandson of yours will be martyred by those from your Ummah. The beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then gave that sand to Ummul Mu'mineen. Sayyidatuna Umm Salma radiallahu anha and it was said that when the sand becomes blood then know that Hussein has been martyred. Allah Akbar. Know that Hussein has been martyred. 
It is reported that she kept that sand in a little bottle and Umm al-Mu'mineen says, I used to say what a difficult day it will be when this sand turns to blood. This narration has been mentioned in Al-Mu'ajam al-Kabir and it is well narrated that this is what happened in the court of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it was told in that court of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while Imam Hussain was a child that this grandson of yours will be martyred. There is another narration. It is reported that Amir Mu'minin Mawla Ali radiallahu anh passed by the land of Karbala while on his way to Sifin. Famous narrations I'm giving you which you've heard over years. I'm repeating them and mentioning them to you because we are now talking about the historic history and, 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 and about the, the, the events leading now towards Karbala so that we remember these things and we remind each other about it. So when he was on the, when Mawla Ali radiallahu was on the way to Sifin, he inquired about the name of a place. So the people said this place is called Karbala. They say he wept so much that the ground became wet with his tears. He then said, I presented myself in the holy presence of Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I found Allah's Nabi weeping. Allah Akbar. Mawla Ali radiallahu was weeping when he came to know that the name of that place where he is is called Karbala. He said, I presented myself in the holy court of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I found Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam weeping and I asked the reason for this. So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Jibreel just departed alayhi salam. Jibreel just departed after saying that my son Hussein will be slain alongside the river Euphrates in Karbala. Jibreel then got me to smell the sand from there. I could not bear this and tears flowed from my eyes. So it's one narration also that says Jibreel alayhi salatu wa came with this message and brought the sand. Now this is the narration about Hadith Ali radiallahu but Mawla Ali radiallahu is saying that this happened and I hence when I passed the land of Karbala on my journey to Sifin I Hazrat Sayyid Ali radiallahu an was so depressed and so saddened because of the message that was brought by Jibril Amin alayhi salatu wasalam and as per another narration by an angel that had never descended before in the court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasalam it could be that this both happened at two different times but I'm not going to go into that discussion right now it is reported in one narration that Mawla Ali radiallahu passed by that land where today is the sacred grave of the persecuted Imam, Imam Hussain radiallahu anh, he said, here his steeds will be made to sit. Here their saddles will be kept. Here their blood will flow. Some of the youth of the noble family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa will be slain on this land and the earth and the skies will weep over them. These things were mentioned before the shahada of Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anh, starting off more than 300 years before. And Allah knows even how much before. And then in the zaman of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself mentioned it to Hazrat Amul Mu'min Umm Salma radiallahu anh. Mawla Ali radiallahu anh mentioned this while he was on his way to Karbala. So it was on oh, while he was on his way to Sufin and past Karbala. So it was known always that Sayyiduna Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala an will be made shaheed. It was known that the grandson of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be made shaheed on the plains of Karbala. It was known that the flowers from the Mubarak garden of Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra will be made shaheed on the plains of Karbala. It was known that they will go through this difficult test in their lives. It was known that they will pass a difficult time in their lives. It was known that these companions of the beloved Rasul, the companions of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew, the Sahaba Ikram knew, the Ahl Bayt knew, they all knew that Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala an will be made shaheed. So it was something that was known long before it happened. And hence those words of Ustaz Zaman where he says that it was already destined for this to happen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with true love for Hasnain Karimain. May we keep away from those who say do not remember in the proper and the correct manner the shahada and the martyrs of Karbala and the martyrs of Islam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from them and also keep us away from those who say that they are remembering the shahada but yet they are amongst those who slander the sahaba of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us with iman. Let us leave this world with iman when the time of our leaving departure comes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you five public set ajib to all those who are ill in the Ahlul Sunnah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exalt in Jantanaim all those who have passed on.